Now it's time for story time with Brother Dennis. All the children. Happy Sabbath. Wait for the last couple people to show up here. I'm there. I'll get a little closer. Maybe you can hear me a little better. Have you, any of you, ridden in an airplane before? Oh, some of you haven't. Well, those of you had, did you pilot the airplane? No. No. Didn't do it, huh? Well. I was, when I was pretty young, which was a long, long time ago, um, I was going to take pilot flying lessons. And I was going to be the pilot. And this one day, I was going to do fly all by myself for the first time ever. Now, I wasn't so much worried about crashing the plane. Maybe I should have been. I mean, I had, you know, uh, I think 11 hours of flying time in which is about half of that was on the ground checking out the plane. So I you know, five, six hours, seven hours, something like this, in the air, actually piloting a plane. And uh, so it wasn't, but I wasn't worried about crashing it. What I was worried about is talking on the microphone over the radio to the people I need to talk to. Because I had two problems. One is I, it was hard for me on the radio because you know, the whole world is listening kind of a thing. And so I didn't like to do that because I was pretty shy. But the other thing is, when they were talking back to you, it goes, and you're supposed to understand what that means. You know, and I, I could never understand what it meant. I mean, it was just terrible. But I was, I had the, and oh, I was, it was going to be my first flight. And the instructor, my flight instructor, I was his very first student. So he didn't even know what to tell me. So, but we're, we're going to the airport, and this is over in Hawaii, so I was going to Honolulu International Airport, big old airport. And uh, so we're going over there, and we had the plan. We had the plan. I was supposed to, this is my first flight, and the, it's actually written in the FAA, Federal uh, Aviation Administration. It, they actually tell you what you can do on your first flight. You're supposed to take off and drop, and then you can, uh, well, you have kind of a little bit of an option, but there, because it's big, you take off with your instructor, you come around, fly over on the airport, and you land, dump the instructor out of the plane, and then you take off again and do it three more times. Take off, they call it touch and go. As you come down, you land it, take off, go around, land, take off, go around, land, take off, pick up your instructor, and go back to the hangar. That was the plan, and uh, that's what we planned on. So we get there, we check the airplane, we make sure there's no get water in the gasoline, we check the number of wings, and there's two, and uh, you know, rudder and tires are aired up, and you know that sort of stuff. And I hauled it clear, and I crank the engine, blah, 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 you know, and idle there, and the plane's rattling around and they're shaking, and so the. And I didn't, but I knew that part that scared me the worst is a dumb microphone and I'm talking over the radio. I didn't want to do that. And, the, and my uh, Otis, my instructor, goes, Want me to tell the uh, tower what we're doing? And I go, Yeah, you do it. So he goes in there and he's telling them that, you know, he's going to, it's his first flight as a solo pilot and he's going to fly up and we're going to do, you know, which air, they have two runways and which runway should we use. And, there he is talking back and forth, and I couldn't understand most of what they were saying. So when they got, got done talking, I go, well, what would they say? Well, they're ready for you. They know that you, this is your first flight, and they're going to take care of you. Okay. That was the plan. You know, we taxied out, and I took off, you know, like this, and I was kind of nervous. And, and uh, now, these small airplanes, it's a Cherokee 140. Uh, 
when you take off, you know, you have the steering wheel in front of you. It's not really a steering wheel. Your feet do the steering on an airplane. The steering wheel, all it does is make the, tr the plane lean one way or another, or if you push it forward, go down, pull it back, go up. You got your throttle up here on the dash, no gas pedal, you go like that, and you push it forward and you go faster, or go up. So pretty, pretty simple, right? But they got that radio. Oh. So we, we take off, and they, we took off on uh, the left runway, but they wanted me to do the touch and goes on the right runway, because they said something about being busy on the left runway. So I flew over there and circled around, went downwind. That means it, the airport's here and you're, and you're gonna land this way, but you downwind is going like this and you turn base and then final. So I went downwind and, and he goes, uh, well, ask permission to land, you know, and I go, you do it. So he, yeah, that's a one-one uniform, you know, with permission to land, you know, and the permission granted, so I, la I landed. And, stopped right there at the runway, which is kind of weird. You step, stop on a runway, but anyway, I just landed pretty, pretty well, hit the numbers and stuff. So Otis gets out, stands over on the side, and he had his big old radio so he could listen to what was going on. And I, he shut the door and got away and put power to it and pulled up my, pulled up 10 degrees of flaps. You know, he had, those are the air brakes kind of a thing, but it gives you more lift. And it took off. And I flew up and got to 500 feet altitude and turned right and turned right again. And with one one uniform requesting permission to land, I get permission granted. Okay, flew down there and I'm coming around and I turned what they call base. That's turning it so that the air runways like this and you're going this way. And then I turned that turned final. I'm dropping down to about 200 feet like this and they go. <laughs> oh no! And I, but I thought I kind of understood what he said a little bit, and I go, one one uniform uh, maintaining altitude. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> So I go, oh man, he he wants me to circle at the end of the runway. Oh man, so I so I, I so I go, I started. I maintained altitude. I pull back like this, and the stall warning light goes off. It goes sound, sounding on the in the airplane. That means your airplane's going to fall out of the sky. So, oh man, power, power, power! You know, and jam some power on. I like this. I start circling. Well, in the wind, when you're circling, I put it in a nice bank, and I'm just making these nice little circles. Well, it started blowing me over to the other runway. But what? But they wanted me to do. Well, then I saw what was going on is. The Air Force and the uh, Army and the uh, Navy and everybody were doing a special military maneuvers out there. So all these big planes are taking off the wrong way on the runway, but they're military. They don't care, you know. So they're taking off on this runway, and when they take off, when they when the plane lifts up like this, it makes all kinds of wind turbulence. And I'm a new pilot. And they didn't want me to get caught, so they're trying to save, trying to save my life, you might say. They're trying to keep me safe, but I'm blowing over the top of them, you know, like this. So I, my circles had to kind of be more like egg shapes, you know. And I'm, I, I worked my way back over and the runway and circum, and the big old things like seven or C-130s and stuff like big old giant airplanes where you could almost land inside of them if they had the back doors open, you know. I mean. They, they go like this, and they were taking off. And about four minutes after the last one took off, they go, "One way no far, we're going to land." You know, you, so okay, that's me. Okay, I can land now. So I go, "One one uniform landing." You know, so I did my touch and go, boop, like this. And my, I looked over, and my and Otis is going, "Like, what's going on?" I found later his radio didn't work, and so so I take off and and I go around again and comes around and I'm doing this and the same thing happened. He wanted me to circle because now that the I think where the Navy was gone, the army was doing it. So they're taking again their all their jets and their planes and their in fact the uh, excuse me, it was the Air Force because they had one of those big planes, uh, I can't remember right now. It was the big the big radar planes that looked like they're carrying a big frisbee on the back, that one. 
And anyway, so they were taken off, and so I'm up there, and after they quit, after four minutes, they sent me to land. I landed, and, but as I'm taxing about to go over, and here's a bunch more planes waiting to take off. And I'm, oh. So I, but I take off, and I go, and I go downwind, and I go, one morning before I go, continue downwind, blah, 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 you know. So, so they wanted me to just keep on going, the one morning before I'm continuing downwind, so I just step, it's on, and I'd already dropped down from 500 feet to about 200 feet, so I'm flying. It's Hawaii. I'm flying out into the ocean, you know, over the ocean. And I'm flying along and flying along, and, and uh, it's a long time out there. I don't know how many minutes, but quite a ways. And uh, finally I go, you know, I hope they didn't forget about me. <laughs> you know, because I, I don't have enough gas to make it to the mainland, you know, I mean... <laughs> You know, I don't know if I make it to Guam or Japan or the U.S. I don't know where, but I didn't have enough gas to go to any of those places. So I finally, oh man, I grabbed one one uniform continuing downwind. One one uniform is the name of the plane, uh, the call numbers. So I, and they go, oh, one one uniform, turn final, clear to, clear to land. So I, so I turned around. And when I turned around, I could see land. I was clear down there next to Pearl Harbor. I was flown halfway across the island, or down by the island. And I, so I turned up there, I had my flaps on, I was you know, running along pretty slow. But now I'm in the wind, because the, the wind isn't being stopped by Diamond Head or anything like that, you know, that's some of the landmarks there. So I'm in the headwind. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just kind of out there. So I pull up my flaps, I cram on some power, and I'm flying along, you know, 200 foot altitude over the, over the water, and I'm getting up there, and I finally, but I couldn't even see the airport. I, uh, it was on the horizon, you could see it looked about this big as a control tower. And the control tower is, you know, 300 feet tall, and here it's only this big out there. So, but I, I finally got close enough, and, and uh, then it goes, one money in farm, yeah, you know, can you land long? And I go, okay, you know, I like this. Where? I go, well, you want one uniform where? And he goes, land down by the control tower. I go, man, they want to really check me out, you know. So I go, one, one, you know, okay, one, one uniform. So I, I fly almost halfway down the runway at 200 feet altitude. And I, I kind of look down and Otis, you know, my instructor going, <laughs> supposed to land right in front of him, you know. And, so I'm way, way past him. And uh, so then I start coming down and trying to judge it, you know, about a third of the way down. I want to land right in front of the control tower. And they go, one one, you are expedite your landing. Expedite? I could barely land it on my own, much less expedite means hurry it up, do it now. You know, and I go, oh man. So I cut my power and I pull on full flaps and I just kind of let it kind of squash in and then one one uniform expedite your right turn out or, or, uh, and I go what I haven't even landed yet about that time that went Droof! like this and so I go okay I'll pull up my flaps and my air brakes and crammed on power and I, t I take off you know I, so I take off my landing and he goes from the landing and he goes just just barely get the wheels off the ground yeah you know, one one uniform expedite right turn well, I, I go, man, like, what's going on? You know, that's not the plan. That's not the plan. Like this, but I, when I put on power, I did what I usually kind of forget to do is put on my rudder, and so the, I dropped the right wing anyway, so I, I just kept it, kept it dropped, and just kind of left it, you know, two feet off the ground, and just, whew, like, just right out of there. And, I, and then I realized what was going on. Most of the time when you're doing final and landing, you're only on the, on the runway, what, a minute? You know, a minute and a half maybe? I've been a final approach for probably 15 minutes. And 15 minutes, these big old airliners are coming in. <clears throat> and they've probably covered 100 miles when I've covered five. You know, so, or 10. So I'm, I, they're pulling out. You know, I, I pull around, I look, but I look back as I pulled around I looked out the side, and there's no plane there. I go, what's the big rush? And then I look out that side. He'd already passed me. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I just, I go, whoa. 
that was kind of close. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> so I, but I take off and I go up and I go around and I picked up my instructor and my instructor goes, are you okay? <laughs> I go, yeah, why? And he goes, well, I didn't know what was going on. What was going on? I told him, well, I said, just doing what the tower told me to do. You know, and, it, and I'm fine. And so I take off and I go to the other runway where the military is finally done using it. I landed and the tower goes, and one of my uniform, thank you for all your work. You know, we're just trying to keep you safe. You know, and I go, wow. I mean, it was something, but it was part of the plan. You know, God has a plan for us. It's to keep us safe, to, to get us home safely. And home is where he is. That's where home is. And here we went. I went through all this stuff, not part of the plan. I just, it, the plan just kept getting bigger and bigger and more complicated. But God has a plan for us. And it may at times get really complicated for us. But you've got to remember that it's still God's plan for us. And just to follow, follow the instructions and we'll be safe. Would somebody like to do a prayer for us? I'll do it. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for taking care of us, for, for your plan for our lives, and for taking care of us and helping us through those plans, even if we don't understand them, and even if we do, if it's, it's something strange in our lives that's going on, please strengthen us and guide us and fill us with thy grace. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen.